myeloma-related disorders as uncommon and not well understood cancers in cats. They mentioned that in dogs, the diagnosis of a similar condition called multiple myeloma often involves finding a high percentage of abnormal plasma cells in the bone marrow, along with other indicators like specific proteins in the blood or urine and bone lesions. Historically, these criteria have sometimes been applied to cats. So, is it the same picture in cats? Interestingly, the study points out that in cats with myeloma-related disorders, it seems more common to see involvement of organs in the abdomen, like the spleen or liver, without a large number of these abnormal cells in the bone marrow. In fact, previous studies have frequently reported infiltration of the spleen or liver and atypical plasma cell appearance in cats with these disorders, even when bone marrow involvement wasn't significant. The distinction between what might be considered multiple myeloma, which typically involves the bone marrow, and a condition called multicentric noncutaneous extramedullary plasmacytoma, which involves tissues outside the bone marrow, is a bit blurry in cats because the disease often affects multiple systems. Therefore, for this study, the researchers decided to refer to both conditions collectively as myeloma-related disorders. What were the key findings of the study? The study revealed some important insights into myeloma-related disorders in cats. All 50 cats in the study had high levels of globulins in their blood. Interestingly, involvement of the spleen was very common, seen in 86% of the cats where this information was available, and liver involvement was also frequent, occurring in 71% of the cats tested. In many cases, both the spleen and liver were affected. In contrast, a high number of plasma cells in the bone marrow was found in a smaller proportion, 63% of the cats where bone marrow was evaluated. Anemia, or a low red blood cell count, was reported in 67% of the cats, and a low platelet count called thrombocytopenia was seen in 34% of cats. That highlights the difference between cats and dogs with these types of disorders. What about the treatments used and how well they worked? The most common initial treatments involved a combination of melphalan and prednisolone, which was used in 19 cats, and cyclophosphamide and prednisolone, used in 10 cats. Other treatments included chlorambucil and prednisolone in 4 cats, prednisolone alone in 4 cats, and various other combinations in the remaining cats. The overall response rates to melphalan with prednisolone, cyclophosphamide with prednisolone, and chlorambucil with prednisolone were quite high, at 87%, 90%, and 100% respectively. However, side effects were more common with melphalan, occurring in 65% of cats receiving it, compared to 23% of cats treated with cyclophosphamide. The median survival time for all cats in the study was 122 days, 